In C, an array is a basic list of items with a fixed length. It's very easy and efficient to access and modify items in C arrays, but it's not so easy to add, remove, or insert items. This is very similar to the string problem I discussed in one of my earlier videos, and that's because a string is actually just an array of characters. C++ has a class called Vector that acts as an array of any type, such as an integer or an object, and items can be easily added or removed. This is very useful because many projects require storing lists of various types that change in size, and in C, there's no built-in way to do this without knowing the length of the list ahead of time. Implementing a vector of integers would be very easy if we used the code from my string library. The main difference is that we would be storing integers instead of characters, and we would no longer need the library to keep track of the null terminator because those are only needed for strings. That seems simple enough, but what if we wanted a vector that stores a particular data structure rather than an integer? There are many data types that take up different amounts of memory, and we can't just sit down and make a new library for each type we want to store in a collection. That means our vector library will have to keep track of the size of the type it's storing, as well as the length and the amount of allocated memory. The data structure for this library is going to be a lot like the one in my second string video. The only difference is that there is an extra member called size, which keeps track of the size of the type the vector is storing. The vector data is still stored as a char array, even though it can store any type. There is no way to make an array for a generic void type, but all data is ultimately made up of individual bytes, and the C standard guarantees that a char will take up one byte, or one of whatever the smallest word size is on any given system, which is an 8-bit byte 99% of the time. Like the library from my second string video, this library does not actually return a pointer to the vector data structure. Instead, the user is given a pointer directly to the vector's data, which is intended to be cast to a pointer of whatever type the vector is storing. This allows the user to access the vector's items in the same way they would in a traditional C array. Because the user gets the privilege of using these vectors like they would a pointer to a regular C array, the user might confuse the two and improperly free the vector's allocated memory. To avoid this, I suggest either naming the vector in a way that indicates it's a vector and not just a regular array, or type def a vector alias for each type. The vector contains methods to insert, add, and remove elements. Because you can't really pass something by value when it can be any type and size, the add function just returns the memory address of a new place to put a new item. Because this is written in C, you have to cast the return pointer to the correct type and then dereference it in order to set the value of the new item. Luckily, I was able to use the preprocessor to create a special function to do this for you and make it look like you're just setting the value. As always, the code will be linked in the description. In my next couple of videos, I'll be creating a game from scratch in C using React OS, which is an open source operating system written from scratch to be completely compatible with Windows and Windows applications.